Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu Linux Server version 10.04 in VMware Fusion for the Mac. Uh, VMware Fusion for the Mac will allow you to run the server version of Ubuntu in a window on your Macintosh desktop. Uh, you can use that for experimentation, development, just to see what it's uh, like, play around with it a little bit. Uh, first you need to get VMware Fusion. This is available from VMware. Uh, it's not a free product, but you can download a free demo uh, to see if it's something you like or want to keep. Uh, so visit this uh, link right up here uh, and download that and get it installed. Uh, the next thing you need is the Ubuntu server ISO. The ISO is a disk image file, a CD image file, uh, and you're going to use that to actually install this in the Fusion product. Uh, so go to the um, uh, server download site. I want you to uh, select alternative download options. Make sure you select the 32-bit version even if you think you have a 64-bit version, 64-bit uh, processor, uh, because the 32-bit version for VMware Fusion is going to work on your desktop. Uh, you need to select a location, might be in the United States, uh, and then just click this download button, it'll begin. Uh, it's a very large file, it's about 700 megabytes or so, almost a gigabyte, so it'll take anywhere from several minutes on a really fast connection to possibly an hour or longer uh, if you have a slower internet connection. Uh, so once you get that, save it off uh, uh, somewhere on your computer where you can find it, and then fire up the um, uh, Fusion product. Uh, you're going to want to install Windows or another operating system. Um, it goes through kind of a wizard here, um, and um, I'm going to run through this. Um, we're going to start by continuing without a disk because we have that ISO file. And so just drop down this box here and go to Other, and then navigate to where you saved that uh, ISO file. Uh, and I've got it right here, the Ubuntu 10.04 server. I'm going to choose that. Going to continue. Uh, verify that this is correct. It is Linux and it is Ubuntu. Uh, that'll probably come up as a default, but if not, be sure to drop these down and select it. Um, we're not going to use easy install. Um, there's a process by which it will sort of automate the process, but in my experience it doesn't always make the best choices, and, and if you do it that way you're going to have to do some additional installation later. So I'm, I'm going to suggest you not use the easy install. Uh, so just uncheck that box, and then we're going to click continue. Um, we'll take a look at these settings here and see if we need to change anything. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is give it a name, so I'm going to call this Ubuntu um, Server 1004. Uh, that'll give this uh, particular virtual machine a unique name, and I'm going to save it in this virtual machines folder. You can you can save it other places, including on a on a flash drive uh, if it's uh, or an external hard drive if it's big enough. Um, so we'll save that. Um, and now we'll take a look at the system settings. Um, not really going to do anything with these right now, but just point out a couple of things that you could change. Uh, processors and RAM, uh, you've got one CPU, defaults to 512 megabytes, that's a pretty good, pretty good choice for, for uh, um, uh, RAM unless you know you need more. Uh, 3D is going to be disabled here, um, all you're going to do is get a command line. Uh, we're going to start the, the network up with NAT, Network Address Translation, um, and that means it's going to use the, the built-in networking on your computer um, to kind of share a, uh, an IP address. Um, depending on your circumstances, you may want to come back and change that to bridge mode at the end. I'll show you how to do this, but, but in the beginning at least, you're more sure of getting through the installation if you leave it at NAT. Uh, sound is connected. Um, that's pretty much standard stuff. Um, so we can um, uh, get rid of that now and go ahead and go through the installation. Uh, we just simply going to click this button to start it up, and we get this uh, screen here, and the installation program will load. First thing you need to do is select your language. Now, um, um, what you're going to find is in order to work in this window, you have to click in this window, and then when you do that, you kind of lose your mouse. Um, because this is a, now a command line interface, so the mouse is gone. To get your mouse back to go f to other places on the desktop, it's Control Command, and that brings your mouse back. So again, to work in this window, click in it, but then you lose your mouse, or you want your mouse back, Control Command. 
Okay, so I'm going to click in it, and now we're in, in um, uh, text-based only, so you can just um, use the cursor keys. You won't use your mouse on this. Uh, select your language, and then the first default is going to be install Ubuntu server. One thing you might want to do before you get too far into this is check the disk for defects. Um, this will make sure that the ISO file that you downloaded actually came through clean and doesn't have any uh, problems. Um, and that might save you some time later, or if the installation doesn't work or hangs up for some reason, you're going to want to come back and check this uh, to see if that's what the problem is. But go ahead and select Install Ubuntu Server, press Enter. Installation routine will start up. Uh, choose the default language, that's straightforward enough, and for these um, you can usually just press the enter key. Um, I'll tell you a couple of points you might need to press the tab key um, to make a couple of selections, and I'll, I'll alert you to those as we go. Uh, press in English. Um, again, based on language, you're in one of these territories. You know what? You know where you live. Um, you don't really need to have the um, um, installation program check your keyboard layout. It defaults to no. If for some reason you've got a strange keyboard, then you can go through this routine, but I, I'm going to suggest it's not really necessary. You can pick it. In my case, it's going to be USA, and it's going to be USA layout. So you can default through those. Uh, it does some other detecting, scans the CD-ROMs, does some stuff here. This part of it goes fairly quickly, detecting the network. Now it's going to configure the network with DHCP. That just means it's going to try to hook up to your uh, um, uh, network, and, and that's almost always going to work if you've selected NAT, that network address translation, uh, which is the default. Uh, host name, make it simple. Um, it defaults to Ubuntu. I'm going to just going to say uh, 1004 Ubuntu 1004 so that I know what, uh, what version I'm working with. Uh, but you can name it something else. Uh, just don't name it anything long, complicated, no punctuation, just a straight, simple name. Uh, and then you can hit Tab and then Continue. It's going to set up a clock. It guesses your time zone. Um, if uh, that's not correct, you can hit No, and then you can select it from a list. Uh, but it'll probably be OK. Now it's going to go through a process of partitioning the disk. This might seem a little bit scary, but rem remember that it's only going to make changes to this disk file that it thinks is a hard disk. This is not actually going to do anything to your hard drive, so this is safe for you to do. Um, of course, if you're not working in, in within the Fusion um, uh, product, then you need to give a pause to that because you don't want to you don't want to install that you know over your existing operating system. Uh, but we're okay within this uh, uh, little window here. Um, it defaults to this um, uh, logical volume manager. You don't really need that um, you know, with this image, so I'm going to suggest you just use um, guided use entire disk and press enter when that's selected. Um, this is the only choice, so press enter again. It's going to go through a process and show you what it's going to do. Um, now, at this point, if you were installing this on a live box, you'd probably want to take a careful look at this, but um, this is pretty much um, uh, pretty much default stuff for the Fusion installation. So tab to yes and press enter. It'll format the partitions. and it'll start installing the base system. Now, this is actually going to take several minutes, so I'm going to pause the recording and I'll come back at the next interesting prompt.